we are remembering some of the stories and events that impacted our area this year. Take a look back with us while we share with you some of the key moments from May and June. The month of May kicked off with a heartfelt surprise for young Grayson Witham, who Make-A-Wish gifted with a brand new camper following his kidney transplant. We're really in the business of hope, and we know that giving kids something positive to look forward to can make them feel better. And riders saddled up for the 140th year of harness racing at the Bangor Raceway. There's been many, many historic events here. Former gubernatorial candidate Elliot Cutler pleaded guilty to four counts of possession of sexually explicit material of a child under 12 and was ordered to serve nine months of a four-year sentence. I am embarrassed, I'm ashamed, and deeply, deeply sorry. In Castine, over 200 Maine Maritime Academy students set out to sea on the 26th voyage of the training ship State of Maine. It culminates an entire academic year at Maine Maritime Academy, but it also culminates 80 years of history in this state. Meanwhile, Belfast residents celebrated their own historic milestone, the city's 250th anniversary. Belfast is a totally different community at this, at this time. Now we're a real arts community. We've got a, a very active library. We've got very active social and music. Music scenes. Tragedy struck Waterville when a fire at Elm Towers claimed the life of one person and sent three others to the hospital. Crews were uh, on nearly every level of this seven-story building uh, helping to rescue and assist. In Alton, 45-year-old Devan Carter was shot by an officer after he allegedly struck his girlfriend with a hammer. Carter was charged with aggravated attempted murder, elevated aggravated assault, kidnapping, aggravated assault, and terrorizing with a dangerous weapon. Rounding out the month, Bangor police and public health officials came together to create the city's first ever community action team, which is meant to help those who are homeless or living with mental health and substance use disorders. It isn't just about knocking on a door and saying, hey, are you in there? Yes, I'm fine. Okay, see you later. Right? It's about talking to somebody. Do you need food? Have you connected with a caseworker? In June, hundreds of hunters from across the state flocked to Augusta's Mill Park for the annual drawing of moose permits. I wish you good luck and happy hunting. And Sean Faircloth, a man who held many roles in Maine, including senator, city councilor, and legislator for Bangor, stepped down as the executive director of the Together Place Peer Run Recovery Center. Faircloth has spent his life serving the community, opening the Maine Discovery Museum in 2001 and securing funding for Together Place in 2018. For me, the exciting fun part was if you could say, oh, here's a policy idea that might work and change people's lives in a positive way. On June 16th, Maine joined a growing number of states requiring law enforcement officers to carry Narcan at all times while on duty. Meanwhile, Mainers across the state celebrated Pride Month. Things have changed so much for the better in the last so many years. There's a lot more support in the state for open love and happiness than a lot of people give it credit for. And Juneteenth. You need to treat everyone you meet the same way you want to be treated because this thing called birth we have no choice you're born to be who you are by chance the Westbrook community was left devastated after a man and woman were fatally shot in front of their children Marcel Lagrange jr. was charged with two counts of murder following the incident and Lee Ann Daigle was sentenced to six years in prison for manslaughter in the death of her newborn daughter more than 35 years ago the baby was abandoned in a gravel pit in Frenchville in December of 1985 in Carmel, police seized thousands of marijuana plants in a raid on an illegal growing operation. This is organizations that are not Maine-based, uh, individuals that are not from Maine, that are not following any of those standards. Maine was awarded more than $271 million to expand broadband access in the state. Today's announcement is the most important infrastructure investment in Maine since the construction of Interstate 95. And in Dover Foxcroft, things ended on a sweet note with the return of the annual Whoopie Pie Festival, which drew crowds by the thousands. Stay tuned throughout the week as we bring you more of this year's top stories. In studio, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News.